Welcome to another episode of Tips from the Swamp by Absolute Control Irrigation Specialists. Today we're going to be discussing the use of a volt ohm meter to track critical parts of an irrigation system. The three things that you need to look at on the meter are AC voltage, which on the meter is designated by a V with a squiggly line, DC voltage, which is a V with a straight line and dashes under it, ohms of resistance, which uses a symbol of an upside down horseshoe, that's for measuring resistance within circuits, and a way to check continuity, and that is done by using this symbol of a triangle with a line through it and a T off the point. Now, the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is how to check for AC voltage on an irrigation timer. The first timer we have is a conventional irrigation timer. It uses 24 to 28 volts of AC power. To locate and check that, you need to find the transformer, then follow the leads that come out of the transformer to where they connect to the system output board or the system. To check that, you make sure the power is turned on. You put one probe on the connection of one of those wires, the other probe on the other connection of that wire, and you should get AC voltage in the range that the clock was intended. In this case, it's 28 to 29 volts. Now, should you be using a more sophisticated golf level system, your transformers often use two output voltages. I'm going to turn off this switch and I'm going to hook up a transformer that is a typical transformer used by Rainbird in their control systems that has two voltage outputs. You'll notice that there are four wires coming out of this transformer. There's two orange wires and two blue wires. What you want to do is find the ends of the two orange wires, which are terminate at a plug here. We put one probe there and here. And now we should see no voltage because I haven't turned the switch on. Now if I turn the switch on, you'll notice that voltage jumps up to 28 volts. That is the voltage that is used in this controller to operate your control valves. The two blue wires, which are terminate here and here, show me 11.7 volts, which is the necessary AC voltage to operate the electronics in the device that you're dealing with to run its solid state circuitry. That's the testing of power for your irrigation controllers. Now, if I switch to ohms of resistance, I can check solenoid to see if it's good. This solenoid is a conventional solenoid. If I put one probe on each wire, you'll notice I get 25.2, 25 ohms roughly. 25 ohms is a correct reading for this particular solenoid. Some manufacturers are at 25, some go as high as 50 ohms. Now, that says this solenoid is good. This next solenoid that I'm going to use, if I put one probe there and one probe here, I get a higher reading. And that's because that's what this solenoid is intended to operate with. If that particular reading were to be a 1, a 2, a 0, that's an indication of a direct short and a shorted out solenoid, which is causing problems back at your irrigation timer. That's the way you can check your solenoids in the field at the valve or at the sprinkler head if you're using a valve and head system. Now, I'm going to go to continuity testing. 
That way, if I have a piece of wire, and I have both ends of this wire available to me, and I want to see if that wire is broken anywhere inside, I can touch one probe to one end of it, one probe to the other end of it, and you'll notice that it reads 0 .001, which is pretty much a complete short circuit. I can also do that with solid wire, which I have here, and again with the meter we should be seeing that same direct connection. Now the other possibility is if you know where the wire is connected at your irrigation timer and you know where it's connected at the valve and you're not sure why it's not working and you want to make sure that the wire is good between the irrigation timer and the control valve, what you can do is remove the wires from the irrigation timer, your neutral or common wire and your one zone wire. If you twist them together, causing them to direct short together, now you can go out in the field and take the other two ends of that wire, remove them from solenoid, valve, whatever they're connected to. Again, take your probes, connect one probe to one wire, one probe to the other wire, and again, you should see a direct connection. If that is not, con if you don't get that kind of a reading, that's just one of those two wires is broken and is not getting power to the device that you're trying to operate. So if that were the case, if I disconnect this connection here and now test the two wires, you will notice that there's no reading or infinity. That's an open, which means there's no complete circuit there. So by connecting those together, we can check for a complete circuit. And if that circuit is not there, then you need to figure out or get a hold of somebody that can track your wire or track your wire and find faults in it, which is a service that Absolute Control does offer. I hope this has been helpful for you. Your voltometer meter is one of the most important tools you have in your arsenal. This has been Tips from the Swamp by Absolute Control Irrigation Specialists Incorporated. And you can check us on our website for further information at absolute-control.com. Thank you.